Advances in material science often lead to um, huge increases in productivity and advancements in society. If you think about it, it's like the Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, they're all named after materials. And more recently, silicon and optical, glass optical fiber led to the computer and uh, the internet. And so you can see that these technologies have had a profound impact on the way that uh, humans live and behave, and also fueled the economy to a certain extent. And therefore, it's very important that we continue to design, discover, and develop new materials. So we're studying chalcogenide materials. These are materials that substantially consist of sulfur, selenium, and tellurium, and they have fascinating properties. Um, one of the properties I like and study the most is their phase change property, so they can exist in multiple states at room temperature. This is very different to most materials. Here we have an opportunity to switch them and use those to make devices that have switchable properties. So you might have experienced chalcogenides, um, especially if you're my age, when we were recording most of our data onto DVDs and CDs, uh, they were actually the, the active layer in the uh, rewritable CDs in the, in the 90s and noughties. So these, these materials have a number of applications aside from the technological applications that we're looking at in um, Actolab. For instance, uh, chalcogenides are often used in solar cells and they're used in uh, thermoelectrics, uh, also uh, semiconductor devices as well. So in our group, we're moving away from some of the more traditional uh, chalcogenide materials that other groups are looking at for data storage and uh, rethinking some materials that were once discarded for data storage applications and applying them to photonics. One of the big advantages of our group is that we can go through the whole process from conceiving a, an idea for a material, uh, simulating it, uh, testing it in the lab or trying to create it and test it in the lab and then fabricating a device. So we don't only do device design and we don't only do materials design, we do the two things in conjunction and this gives us an extra degree of freedom because we're no longer limited by off-the-shelf materials or pre-existing designs. We can design the materials and design the devices uh, synchronously for a specific application. Uh, we've recently found a material that has a very high transmissivity in the, in the visible spectrum and this is really useful for display technologies. We're currently working with ASTAR, uh, other universities in Singapore, to uh, create holographic displays and beam steering devices based on these materials and hopefully one day we'll all have a chalcogenide holographic display in our living rooms.